welcome to Mighty Mangos! Let's start as we always do with the Mighty Minute! What did the Cyclops say to its girlfriend? I don't know. What did the Cyclops say to the girlfriend? You're the one I adore. <laughs> what did the pear say to the apple? I don't know. What did the pear say to the apple? Pear. <laughs> Blah, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of St Mungo's Church, I would now like to perform for you my world-renowned impression of Thomas the Tank Engine. Thank you very much. How do you know when there's an elephant under your bed? I don't know. How do you know when there's an elephant under your bed? Your head hits the ceiling. <laughs> what did the crocodile say to the monkey? Nice to eat you. <laughs> do you have a joke? If you do, film it landscape and send it in to MightyMungos at sitmungos.org and maybe next time we'll see you on Joke of the Week. Now it's time for Gratitude Attitude. Let's see who sent in their videos this week. I'm thankful for being back at college and, and my trampoline. I'm thankful for the world. I'm thankful for cleaning and dancing with Tim Dad. Alexa, play. <laughs> Thank you God for pumpkins. Thank you God for um, plant pots. So, what are you thankful for? Send in your videos to Mighty Mongos. We we love seeing your faces. It's time for WhatsApp. <laughs> Great. You ready, guys? Standing small before a giant so big and tall, who'd have thought? 
nobody could fight at all But little David won When I'm scared When I'm scared You give me courage You give me strength Give me courage to face the day You're the power in me Strength when I am weak When I feel little like little David You're the power in me When I feel little like little David You're the power in my section And all I got is a section You're the power in my section And all I got is a section Every kind
Hey Jarvis, you there? Your service, sir. Engage heads up display. Check. Who's our hero of the faith going to be today? Searching heroes of faith database. Hero is Enoch. Okay, get it loaded up. You're online and ready. This morning, our hero is Enoch. And I'll be honest with you, he's a bit of a legend. I'm going to read the bit from Genesis where we find him. So let's read it. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. And he became the father of Methuselah. Enoch walked faithfully with God for 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God, then he was no more because God took him away. So let's start at the beginning. Feels appropriate, right? Enoch believed in God. It says that Enoch walked faithfully with God for 300 years, but that for the first 65 years of his life, he didn't. Well, what changed? Why did he go from going through life like everyone else to walking with God? Well, our passage tells us that it was the birth of his son, Methuselah. There was this significant event in his life that happened. And just for a moment, it lifted his head up from the day to day, from the normal, and gave him a glimpse of eternity. I had a similar moment in my life, except it was my sister's wedding, not a baby being born. I was going through life feeling pretty content, not really thinking that I was lacking in anything, believing that I was free, I was living my best life. Uh, and then in a moment, I saw a glimpse of eternity and I realized that I was building my life on shifting sands. I saw and realized in my sister and her husband that life with God led to joy and peace and ultimately freedom and that my life choices were actually like lead weights around my ankles. I saw that things are really important in life they're not found in money, in relationships, experiences, and jobs. There's more to life than this. And I set out trying to find what. For Enoch, it was the birth of his son. For me, it was a wedding. Perhaps for you, it's this global pandemic. You've had a glimpse of eternity and started to ask, is there more to life than this? Find someone you trust and ask the question. Email us here at Mighty Mungos and ask the question. Enoch walked with God. You see, the reality is that we all die at some point and having an assurance about what happens to us enables us to walk, crawl, inch at times through life, through the hard things and face into it. I remember when I chatted with my dad after he'd just been diagnosed with leukemia about how he was feeling about the possibility of dying. And he said, David, I've lived my whole life for this moment. It wasn't that he wanted to die, it's just that for him, death wasn't the end and that it didn't hold any fear for him. And I think it was the same for Enoch. The other thing is that it's really important to know when he lived. Many of you will have heard the story of Noah, of how God's heart was breaking at how the people were living, how they turned their backs on him, they were living for themselves, how corruption and violence were normal. And there was a great wickedness and darkness all across the land. Enoch lived in this time, in this moment. It's a time that's unparalleled in history for how badly society was living. Enoch would have stood out from the people around him like Bob the Builder turning up in an Avengers movie. The way that he lived his life would have been completely different to his peers. And that would have been really, really difficult. We heard from Ruth a few weeks ago about Daniel, about how he made a similar decision to trust God and to live his life for him rather than follow along with society. For Daniel, that had some pretty big consequences like being thrown in a pit of lions. For Enoch, we don't know what he experienced, but it's reasonable for us to assume that walking faithfully with God in a time when literally nobody else was would have been pretty tough. It's another reason that he's a hero. He chose to walk with God each day even though that was really hard, rather than being swayed by those around him. What about you? We all have a choice about how we live and the decisions that we make. We can choose to live for ourselves, for others, or for God. If we live for ourselves, only doing things that we want to do, things that make us feel good, and we don't consider other people, and we make sure that we're doing okay, then life quickly becomes quite lonely. 
if we live trying to please other people, making sure we look a certain way, that we say the right things, that we've got the right stuff, life gets exhausting really quickly. And we end up a bit confused about who we are and we could end up feeling trapped or, or under pressure. If we live for God, we do so knowing that he is for us, that he wants the best for us. It means that we have to trust that he actually cares for us. He actually loves us. He sees us. He values us. He delights in us. He weeps with us, rejoices with us. He's always with us. And when life is really awful and when life is really amazing, he's there and he's with us and he's for us. And that's not easy. But I can promise you that there's incredible freedom to be found when we start believing those things and we start living life walking with God, just like Enoch did. The world we live in claims that it's one of the most freest in history, and yet there's so many people that don't experience that. Often people who follow God are, are looked on with pity or anger or disdain, and it's thought that you know, we're the ones that are trapped. However, the Bible and Christian experience throughout centuries paints quite a different picture. It paints a picture one of genuine freedom, because we know that we're loved, we know that we're significant, we know that we're accepted by God. And that changes everything. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 tells us that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So how are you gonna to choose to live your life? The final thing about Enoch is that he went to be with God. Enoch didn't die, he simply went from walking with God on earth to walking with him in heaven, a seamless, transition. Enoch had solved the human problem. I read a great quote this week from a guy called Warren Wiersbe. He said, until a person has learnt to die, they haven't really learnt to live. You see, Enoch lived his life with his mind set on the things of God, fixed his eyes on God, not being swayed by the world around him, but walking the difficult, often lonely path of freedom and hope. If we believe in God, if we set our mind on him, then like Enoch, we walk seamlessly into eternity with God. It's the moment that we live our lives for. Here at Mighty Mongers, we love to get the word of God in our hearts and in our minds. And that's why we have the Merry Verse Challenge. That's who has sent in their videos this week. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Hebrews 12 verse 2. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Hebrews 12 2. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Hebrews 12 2. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep yourself too. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep yourself too. His hands too. Memory verse for this week is drum roll, please. There are many plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's plan that will stand. Proverbs nineteen twenty one. So do send in your memory verse challenge videos to Mighty Mongos at setmongos.org. We can't wait to see more of your faces. Welcome to this week's edition of Mighty Mongos News. We've got three stories for you today. First, next week is the adult takeover. Come on. Second, keep on walking for water. How many miles have you done so far? The third thing is, are you on half term next week? Don't forget to send us a pack pick in your hat somewhere or at home so you can see your faces. That's the end of Mighty Mongo's news for this week. Thank you and goodbye. That's it, our time together is almost over, but we just have time for my favourite section, Family Face Off!
Thank you so much for joining us here at Mighty Mungo's this morning. It's time for you now to go and grab a drink, grab some more snacks, grab a coffee, and, and go for me. <laughs> and join us back here at 10:30 for the next part of St. Mungo's Church Online. See you soon.